The mind is a wonderful servant and a terrible master. Now, what does that mean and why is that relevant in your life as a father, as a single father, as a human being? Because I think that you're not just a father, you're not just a parent, you're not just a mother. Whoever you are, you are someone. You are a human being. I believe that you are a spiritual being having a human experience. But what does it mean? The mind is a wonderful servant but a terrible master. And I really like, I've just spent time, I was meditating just on this path over here. I've been meditating in public, like in the middle of streets, in the middle of roads, in the middle of just where there's a ton of people. And I've been doing a lot of mantra meditation as well. And what I've really come to notice is that the mind is like its own separate being. It's like its own tool, but through, it wasn't always this way for me, through meditation I've gotten this way, but it used to be that I thought that I was my mind. It was like my mind and my soul, like I was just my mind. I would just think the thoughts in which I think, I would think that I was those thoughts. Like there was no separation between me and the thoughts that I would think. It was just like, I'd have a thought that I'm fat and I just think that I'm fat. I'd have a thought that I'm ugly and I think that I'm ugly. I'd have a thought that I'm not enough and I think that I'm not enough. I'd have a thought that I'm beautiful and I think that I'm beautiful. I'd have a thought that I'm the best man in the world and I think that the be I'm the best man in the world. Then I'd have a thought that thought that I was the worst man in the world. All of these thoughts that I'd have, I just follow them and I just go places of like, ooh, that chick, I think that girl is hot. I should go talk to that girl. I should go, that girl's ugly. This girl's this, this thing's that. And I would just like make all these random A judgments and have all these random thoughts, but I'd follow those thoughts and I'd be all over the place. And so that's where it is. Like the mind is a terrible master, but a wonderful servant. Because when one is conditioned in the mind, when one's mind runs the show, meaning that you're in that loop, you know? If your mind thinks you're ugly, you think you're ugly. If you don't have the ability to take space and to kind of like reel in the mind a little bit and to have space and to know that you are not your mind, then it becomes the terrible master because that just creates suffering. Like, it's not true that you're ugly. It's not true that you're fat. It's not true that you're beautiful. It's not true that you're any of those. You just are what you are. You can make it mean whatever you want to make it. And that's the power of the mind. That is where the people say the power of the mind is your choice in what cho which thoughts you choose to think and where you put your energy because that is your choice. That is your responsibility. You have the power to take energy and put it into particular thoughts that serve your being. So for example, if I really want to feel joy, well, I'm going to think I'm an amazing human being. And I would rather particularly choose those thoughts than choose ones that make me feel less than. But for someone who doesn't have the ability to do that, they are in kind of control or they're like the mind is the master in which whatever the mind is thinking, whatever the thoughts are thinking at that time is that is who you are, but that is not the truth. And so, the mind is a wonderful servant. When one can begin to build space around the mind through meditation, through breath work, through different modalities and different techniques, meditation probably being the prominent one for me and the one that has been the most important, I think the one that is prominent for many, many individuals, it's a way in which to do this. Um, when one begins to build that space, they begin to see that they are not the thoughts that they think, that they are separate from the thoughts and then the mind becomes a tool in which they get to use as like the mind is the servant, they get to master the mind in which the mind begin, then begins to be a tool for to navigate this world and to navigate life. And the importance of doing this is so that you are not, there's a garbage truck coming in, that's hilarious. So that you are not victim to your mind and the thoughts that you think because I'm sure you felt it, I'm sure you've experienced it. Thoughts create emotions, emotions create thoughts. So it's kind of like a synonymous loop. And I'm sure you've been victim to your emotions, victim to your thoughts, the ones especially that say that you're not enough, that you're stupid, that you're ugly, that you're not a good dad, that you're a terrible dad, that you're a terrible per person, that you're a terrible parent. I'm sure that you've all fell victim to those thoughts. And the truth is, is that you don't have to. And that's a wild game to play, is that you don't have to. And to begin to play that game, to begin to master the mind is the way. It's the way in which I'm choosing to navigate life. How can I completely be liberated from the mind, which is partially why I was literally just over there meditating in the middle of the pathway. Yesterday I was in the middle of like the downtown core on the street, on this path where there's hundreds of people walking back and forth. 
and also like thousands of cars driving by and I'm sitting there just mantra meditation, got day, got day, because there's part of my mind that is not yet liberated. Part of my mind is scared. Part of my ego is scared. My identity is scared of, ooh, what are people gonna think? What are people gonna say? What are people gonna perceive you as? What if people laugh at you? What if people throw things at you? What if people steal you? What if people steal your clothes? What if people steal your backpack? What if people steal your camera? There, these are all these little excuses and things that are popping into my mind that show me that I am not free there. That there is something in which I am still averting, have an aversion towards. And so what do I do? I go into it. I lean into it. I lean into those edges because by leaning into those edges for me, I get to experience myself in that space and remind myself that I'm safe, that I'm loved and be able to tap into that center, into the soul to quiet the mind, which isn't the point of meditation, but it is a byproduct of meditation. It isn't the point of meditation, it's a byproduct. Quiet, silencing, all that kind of stuff, it's a byproduct of being in the now, being in the moment, and teaching myself that under no condi any, and any conditions and any circumstances that I can be present and I can be here and I can be in the moment. So that's really the journey that I'm on, is, is really mastering the mind. I've come a long way, I've come a very long way. I've been meditating for, almost eight years, pretty much every single day for hmm, anywhere from three minutes to three hours, <laughs> four hours maybe sometimes, who knows, I don't know. And it's only becoming more and more. And what I'm really beginning to see now also is that my life is one big meditation. My life is one big learning lesson, but it's really one big meditation, one big game in which I constantly get to check in with myself. Am I showing up from soul, love, joy, pure bliss, or am I showing up from the mind? And that's my game. What game do you choose to play? Do you choose to play the game of the mind or do you choose to go above the game of the mind? And, and the simple way to do it is through meditation. I will swear to God, like it's very hard in the beginning. It is hard, it's challenging. You have so many stories. You're, you're so attached to the mind that that it's, it's, it's perceived as hard, but meditation is actually the easiest thing ever. It's literally just like, do you think, hmm, good question. Do you think this tree here, this tree right here, do you think that tree struggles to grow? Do you think that tree is just sitting there being like, oh, like I gotta grow, oh, this is so hard, I gotta grow. Or do you think that it's just growing? Well, I can guarantee you that it's just growing. It's actually probably pretty easy because it's getting water, it's getting everything it needs from the environment, from the space. And then when the time comes for it to die, it'll just die. But for the most part, it's just doing its thing without like thinking or without interrupting. And it's kind of like meditation. Meditation is just being here. It's just witnessing everything unfold. It's being in the moment. And that, that word moment, what does it mean to be in the moment? That means so much. It doesn't just mean, oh, I'm here in the moment. It means so much. There's so much depth to that word and there's so much depth to every word, but meditation is a way in which one can do it. Um, there's lots of different recommendations on how to meditate. I've actually made a video on how to meditate that's still valid and still true. Uh, so you can always go check that out. I'll link it somewhere here. Um, but that's all that I want to share today because I'm going to get home and I'm going to go have some breakfast and I really want to enjoy this walk and I really want to enjoy this day. It's about nine o'clock in the morning. So let's get it. Have a wonderful day, guys. Love you all. And peace, grease, love, and light. Y'all, boom, boom. And remember that love doesn't always mean the good stuff. It's not always like this, woo, it's sometimes a slap in the face. <laughs> love can be anything. It doesn't have to be one thing. In fact, love is everything. It's not just one thing. Peace.